So when you're watching sea otters, you're probably watching them eat because they have an incredible warm fur, but they don't have a lot of blubber. So what that means is metabolically, they need to eat a lot. So when you're watching sea otters, they're generally eating or digesting. <laughs> With the fur trade that happened in the 18th and 19th century, it eliminated one of the top predators, sea otters. And with that came this cascade of indirect effects. All of the prey that sea otters ate could all of a sudden increase in numbers and even in size. And people on the coast then became increasingly reliant on these shellfish. Uh, for food to feed their families, uh, for livelihoods, for their jobs. With the increase in some of these shellfish fisheries came the erosion of kelp forests because one of those major shellfish are sea urchins. So as soon as you start messing with sea urchins, you have dramatic changes from kelp forest systems to urchin barren systems. So with the recovery or return of sea otters, a conflict has arisen and um, managing this conflict and understanding the multiple trade-offs associated with this conflict is what the Pew Fellowship is about. Then what we want to do is start designing ecosystem-based management policies that account for not only the ecological dynamics but also the social dynamics and the cultural dynamics at play. The oceans are so incredibly important to humanity, yet they're difficult to study and they're ridiculously easy to exploit and damage. And so we need to understand how oceans work, how we impact them, so that we can better make use of them wisely.